By the mid-1940s, the Arlington homecoming was a firmly etched autumn tradition. In addition to the crowning of the first homecoming queen in 1946 and the first king in 1947, students also routinely participated in some lesser known homecoming rituals. Where the Olympic pool is now, they would build this huge bonfire the night before homecoming. The big concern was that no one came and lit that fire before the event, you know. And this was huge. Okay. This, this was twice the height of this room. There would probably be eight, 900 people there. And then they had the, the annual snake dance. People would join hands and travel. We'd go down Vail or um, one of the streets or Walnut. And they'd go out on Route 14, the Northwest Highway, stop a car, and all 900 people went through that car. Now we'd go through some of the buildings, which we were not supposed to do. We actually went through uh, Seberg's drugstore and uh, People would steal candy and, and take, you know, little things, I'm sure. My father had the Arlington Theater back in the 30s and early 40s, and my father would shut down the theater, turn the lights up, and let them come in. Right in the front door, right out the back door. All these kids. <laughs> then the school or the police shut it down, that was it. <laughs> well, they were rocking cars on yeah. the highway. Some of the kids, the good kids, weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Though World War II had been raging in Europe and Asia since 1939, the United States had remained militarily uninvolved, opting instead to impose trade embargoes on Germany and Japan. Life in small-town America seemed safe and secure until December 7, 1941. It was a, an unusual time because it was uh, the wartime and uh, probably the most defining event in my life. I remember I went to a Sunday matinee at the theater with my best friend at that time from my class. And uh, we went to the, the show late in the afternoon. And when we got out, everything was quiet. And the announcement had then been made. And that was uh, a stunner for us. It, uh, it didn't sleep too well that night. We'd go to the displays, the theater. One of the fathers picked us up. And they announced that Pearl Harbor had been bombed. And man, we, everybody was, the kids and everybody were shook. And then the facts came out about it. But the thing that happened in our class is the older kids were drafted right out of the uh, senior year, weren't they, Esther? The Northwestern ba backed a special train into Arlington Heights because Arlington Heights had the, the regional draft office. And they filled the train with draftees. After that, there were no young men around.